Pro-Chancellor, it is a great honor to welcome here today Mr. Rohan Palawata. Rohan Palawata left university in Sri Lanka with a master's degree in business administration. He received a scholarship to study overseas for 12 months. He was given the option of many countries, but chose Japan. Why? He is interested in martial arts. During his year's scholarship, he toured leading Japanese companies such as Toyota. Rohan Palawata is the executive chairman of Lanka Harness, a Sri Lankan company. The quality requirement for Lanka Harness's product is one part per million. This means that only one defect is tolerated for every million products produced. Lanka Harness supplies products to such prestigious companies as Aston Martin, Ford, Honda, Toyota, and General Motors. Their products include impact sensors for automobile airbags and seat belts. Lanka Harness contributed the equivalent of over 63 million pounds in foreign revenue for Sri Lanka in 2017. In recognition of his outstanding contribution to the Sri Lankan economy, the Junior Chamber International awarded Rohan the most prestigious award in the category of business and entrepreneurial accomplishment in 2006. In 2013, the University of Sri Jayawad and Apura's Department of Commerce and Industry named Rohan as the Entrepreneur of the Nation, as well as awarding him the platinum honor for his lifetime contribution to management excellence. Rohan is an eloquent speaker. He has delivered more than 500 keynote addresses, both locally and internationally, including a TED talk. He believes that the youth of today should focus on innovation and creativity as opposed to mainstream ideas. In a moment, Rohan, you will speak to us. I have been told that Rohan, when he speaks formally, likes to begin informally with a song, playing his guitar. Really? Today? Oh yes. That's why you have the lyrics in your program. And so, Pro-Chancellor, for his outstanding contribution to international business, it is my great pleasure to present Mr. Rohan Palawata for the degree of Doctor of Business Administration, Honoris Causa. <laughs> Honoris Causa et Lititiae Hymnis, which of course translates from the Latin as with songs of joy. Through the corridors I sleep, lie shadows dark and deep. My mind dances in lips in confusion. I don't know what is real, I can't touch what I feel. And I hide behind the shield of my illusion. So I continue to continue to pretend that my life will never end. And flowers never bend 
with the rainfall. The mirror on my wall casts an image dark and small. I'm not sure at all, it's my reflection. I'm blinded by the light of God and truth and right, and I wander in the night without direction. So I continue to continue to pretend that my life will never end and flowers never bend with the rainfall no matter if you're born to play the king or pawn the line is singly drawn to enjoy sorrow so my fantasy becomes reality and i must be what i must be and face tomorrow so i continue to continue to pretend that my life will never end and flowers never bend with the rainfall. Thank you. Back in the year 2016, I had the occasion to address the United Nations at their headquarters, not in Geneva, but in New York. It was a four-day program on sustainable development goals where I had to deliver a speech on the third day the, as the first speech. And I, in fact, wanted to start my speech at the UN with a song. In fact, the same song by Paul Simon and Garfunkel. But on the very first day when I entered the, because it is being said, the only property in the US that does not belong to US is the United Nations premises. Because as you know, it is governed by the Geneva Convention. So the moment you enter the UN premises, the US law does not apply. So on the very first day, I came to know that the security was very stringent for that matter. And I sought permission to take my guitar to the UN chamber on the third day and the security declined. They said, no, you cannot take a musical instrument to the main chamber of the UN. Myself, being an attorney at law, I knew that if you make your request in writing, if they decide to decline, they have to decline it in, decline it in writing. So on the second day, I took my request in writing and handed over to the authorities. And they still did not want to act then and there. They said, we will look into the matter. And then on the third day where I was to deliver my speech, I received a call on my hotel room, and I was told that I have been permitted to take my guitar to the UN chamber. Of course, I started with a song, and there was a reason for me to do that. On the, very, on the two first days I saw, most of the people were not interested in the speeches that were going on in at the podium. They were engrossed in their digital devices under the table, sometimes wearing their headphones and listening to, pretending to listen. So I wanted the attention of the full house, and I in fact had the attention of the full house because I had a message for my country. And that is not the point. At the end of the day, I wanted to know as to how permission has been granted. Then they showed me the letter that I submitted in writing. It was endorsed by a person no lesser than the Secretary General at that time, Ban Ki-moon himself. He had written, I shall never ever allow a musical instrument in the main chamber of the UN. But if a speaker uses a musical instrument to enhance the expressions of his speech, then I shall allow, therefore I allow. So the point that I want to especially inculcate in the minds of the young graduates up there is that what is it in me that made me not take that no for an answer on the very first day? What is it in me that made me persist I trust. This is what is called passion. I was not only that I wanted to start my speech with a song, I was passionate in doing so. That is why even when they said no, even when the security said no, I had the energy to persist. So in whatever you do, you will definitely, you should resolve today as graduates to add value to wherever that you work as employees or in whatever capacity you are. So first message is you should, if the mentality is the package that you get at the end of the month, the salary that you get at the end of the month, of course you can lead a mediocre life. 
But if you want to get into the next level of life, you need to be passionate in whatever you engage yourself in. As it was said, I'm into manufacturing. I manufactured the impact sensor for the automo automobile airbag. That is a device that can distinguish between life and death. For the impact, the airbag must come out. That is why the quality requirement is called one PPM quality. One part per million is the defect tolerance rate. And that is the highest level of quality anywhere in the world. There is no quality beyond that. So when I embarked in my small country, Sri Lanka, I was told by everyone, it is impossible to achieve this level of quality. Our country is not known for this. But then, if you have visited Sri Lanka, you must have seen all these great monuments which age about 2,000 years. I believe this DNA must be somewhere in our people. I believe it provided the right, provided the right leadership that I can rekindle this DNA, that I was right. And here I am. I have been manufacturing this product for the past 15 years. And once again, especially for the young graduates, success does not come on a straight line. I had to travel to Japan 47 times within the span of 15 years to convince the Japanese that I could do this life-saving device in Sri Lanka. Even on the 46th occasion, I did not know that the Japanese were going to impart with the order to Sri Lanka. So it is only on the 47th time that I hit success. And also, before the conclusion of my speech, I have to tell you that I would be standing to contest the presidency of Sri Lanka on the 7th of December. And I have, in terms of knowledge creation, I have contributed in the fields of acculturation. Acculturation means to find out whether an indigenous culture can be introduced with an alien culture. And also I, I have researched into the area of what triggers in the mind of an investor the investment decision. So knowledge creation is necessary, especially when you are seeking public office today, the leadership that we are looking for is knowledge leadership. So you, you must set an example. So today's recognition by the University of Bolton will certainly stand in good stead in my future endeavors, especially standing for presidency of my country. That will be an authentication by one of the best universities in this country, especially I heard it is the fifth ranked university in UK when it comes to student satisfaction. So to be authenticated by a university of the caliber of Bolton is no mean measure. Thank you, Bolton, for the honor. Thank you so much, everyone.